could have killed up all of Jerusalem, he still wasn't going to get to Jesus. Why? Because God always protects his people. Y'all ain't saying nothing. God always protects his people. And so, and so the first Herod, Herod tried to kill Jesus. The second Herod killed John, uh, yeah, killed John the Baptist. I talked about that a little bit ago, I think. Um, John the Baptist was the one, he was the forerunner for Jesus out there in the wilderness. He was the one out in the wilderness with them hot clothes on, eating honey and locusts and telling people that Jesus was coming. And as long as he stayed in the wilderness, in his lane, he was fine. But the minute he went to Herod's house and started trying to set order in Herod's house, that's when he got in trouble. And then Herod's daughter said, I want his head on a platter. And because Herod was crazy, he did exactly what the girl said. So the first Herod tried to kill Jesus. The second Herod tried or did kill John the Baptist. Now this third generation Herod, somebody say third generation. Third generation. He then killed James already, and now he's wanting to kill Peter. So that, that spirit, somebody say that spirit. That spirit ran in that family. And can I tell you that that spirit is still alive and well today? There is still a spirit that comes to harass the church. The enemy is not happy when there is one accord and unity in a church. So he will find ways. And and we got to, beloved, beloved, we got to get to the place. Here it is. We got to get to the place that we recognize the strategies of the enemy. And, and, and come against it rather than falling for it. Oh. Now, how many of y'all know that's a whole lot easier said than done? Because the, the reality is, and y'all can talk back to me, but the reality is it's easier just to jump on the same bandwagon as everybody else than to say, you know what, something about this ain't right. This ain't how we supposed to be. This ain't what we supposed to be saying about each other. This ain't what we're supposed to be doing towards each other. I think you prayed it earlier. In this house, we ought to be, we ought to love everybody. Now, we're not all at the same place, but you got to love people where they are. Okay. <laughs> Peter is being, when, that, when the Bible says that, that, that there were four Quintarians of soldiers, he is being guarded by, I think I said 12, but it's actually 16 soldiers. 16 soldiers. He got 16 soldiers one guarding him. One man, 16 soldiers. That's just on the outer court. Right. Then when you come inside, there's still two more guarding him. Right. And he's in chains. Right. And he has on no clothes or shoes. Right. For one man. Huh? Or, or he's extremely anointed. Amen. See, because when the enemy recognizes that you have an anointing on your life, he come against you hard. And many in the body of Christ are failing because we have misinterpreted the test. Instead of our, instead of us realizing, oh, this is the enemy. I must be growing up in God for the enemy to come after me with such force. We just get, oh, I just can't take it no more. I'm leaving. I just can't deal no more. I'm just tired. I just need a break. And you don't realize that all along, that's the enemy trying. Gee, Monique, Pete. Who, which, who is that back there? Zion? Just where's Zion? Oh, okay. Come here, Zion. Because this is how the enemy, uh, uh, you're going to have to follow me. <laughs> Come this way. Meet me back here. Hey, how are you, Zay? You good? Yeah. It's good to see you. So, okay. So here how the enemy doing some of y'all. You come in and this your seat. And you do all right right there until somebody say something that you don't like. In the next couple of weeks, you sit right there, and you are right there till somebody says something you don't like again. <laughs> then you, you, you sit right there till somebody do something you don't like again. Then the next Sunday, you don't even bother to take a seat. You just stand <laughs> on the wall. Because now you set on ready. Because now you just know somebody. And as soon as they say the next thing you don't like, 
you out the door. Now, what you don't realize is that from the moment, you can come back up, baby. You don't, what you don't realize is that from the moment you sat right here, the enemy started crafting a plan right. a to plot. see He's a plot. He, thank you. He crafted a plot to see if he could get you on out the door. Right. And rather than you taking a stand against him, you just became his little. Right. Until he pushed you right on out the door. And so here's, here's but here it is. If the church would wake up right. and pray. When you see him move from that seat to that seat, come on, somebody. The whole church needs to start praying. When you see, you got to pay attention. When you start seeing people acting out of character, that ain't your time to go in the gossip mode. Well, what's going on with her? Child, you know, what's going on with Kia? Cause she used to, she used to be, and now she. What's going on? I bet it's that husband of hers. <laughs> Do y'all, are y'all following me? Do y'all see what, are y'all getting this? Because we, we, we process everything in the flesh, but in order for us to really be the church that God has called us to be, we got to start seeing some of this stuff as the spiritual attack that it is. And corporately, somebody say corporately. And corporately come against it. Amen. This is a problem in the body of Christ. You can't hardly get two churches to come together and pray. They want you to come to their prayer meeting, but they don't want to come to yours. You can't hardly get people to come to pray. If you announce a concert, you can fill up a church. But you start talking to people about coming to a prayer meeting and all kind of stuff. I, um, well, you know, I don't, I don't really like to pray out loud. Hello? But we see, do y'all, I wanted y'all to see tonight. I didn't want you to see. The Lord wanted you to see tonight. The power of corporate prayer. Can I tell you that there's enough of us in this room right now and enough of us watching live stream and enough, enough of us watching on Periscope that we could, if we could really come together in unity and in one accord, we could make some changes happen. And so we got to get to the place that we see the attack of the enemy, that we see the plot, that we see what he's trying to do and not don't so quickly fall in partnership with him. Mm. Y'all should see how y'all looking at me. In, the enemy often uses, watch this, the enemy often uses faith breaking strategies against us. So the stuff that he bring up in your life, he ain't just messing with you because, you know, he want to be messing with you. He got a plan and or a plot. And his plot is he's trying to break your faith. He's trying to make you doubt God. He's trying to make you doubt that God can and will or that God said. He's trying to make you believe the lie that God has somehow forgotten about you. Look at your neighbor and say, he's not forgotten about you. So if we look back for a moment at verse 5, it said, Peter therefore was kept in prison, but prayer was made without ceasing. Initially, y'all got to catch this. Initially, Peter's situation didn't change even though they were praying. Verse 5, therefore, Peter was kept in prison, but prayer was made without ceasing of the church unto God for him. So because the church came together and prayed, God responded and struck back at the enemy. See, too many in the body of Christ are trying to strike back in our own self rather than letting God strike back. Can y'all see that difference? Look at your look at your neighbor and say, you 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 can't fight against the enemy on your own. And let me I guess let me just ask, how many of y'all believe we have an enemy? 
Okay, so we good there. Everybody know we got We have a real live <laughs> enemy. He don't believe, and, 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 and so people are like, I, I don't believe that there's a, a force out there that would intentionally try to send people to hell. Well, uh, here's the problem. He don't think he's going. He still thinks he can build up an army big enough and bad enough to overtake God. That's what got him in trouble in the first place. Because he wanted to be equal with God even when he was in heaven. As as Lucifer, when he was in heaven, when he was the when he was the uh, praise and worship leader. <laughs> in one description, it says that all of the instruments that we're familiar with today were in his wings. So as he walked, he made music. Yeah, most beautiful angel in heaven, just full of music, full of harmony, full of full of melody. He got so caught up in himself that he wanted to sit right next to God. And watch this. Please don't miss this. The Bible says not only did he want to be seated right next to God, but he convinced a third of the angels that he was right. So if that joker could get a third, do y'all see this? If he could get a third of the people that was created in heaven... If he could get them persuaded, how much more can he persuade people where we are concerned? And so we have to be hit all day. The father's been talking to me, and it's like, you got to tell your people that, 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 that when you became the regional director of intercessory prayer, that wasn't just a promotion for you. But it was a promotion for them as well. And so we got to be, we have to be, we have to be, say this with me, we have to be. We have to be. People of, prayer. people of prayer. Now, I, I ain't tripping. I ain't asking you to be all, you know, in prayer every day for an hour. You, you know, don't. I ain't saying you got to get up at 6 a.m. every every morning and, and spend an hour in prayer and all of that. I'm not saying that. But I am saying we have to be people, watch this, whose first response is prayer. Amen. That's a Selah moment. Because if, if most of us in here are truthful, Prayer is not our first response. It might be in the top ten. <laughs> After we talk to this person or that person or send, put it on Facebook or whatever else we do, then we might get to prayer. So our first, say it with me. My first response to everything must be prayer. And when it's not, I'm leaving an open space. For the enemy. And he will walk in. So if we look back again at verses 7 and 8, and Peter, I'm sorry, and behold, the angel of the Lord came upon him, and a light shined in the prison. Can I, can I stop right there for a moment? Because that prison was a dark place. But when the angel came, it shined light into the dark place. Jesus talks about how he was the light of the world and he is still shining light in dark places but he's not shining light now in physical dark places teach Holy Spirit he is shining light now in the dark places of our hearts so think it not strange beloved that the more you grow in him and the more you trust him the more he begin to show you about you Amen. Amen. Now that, and that can be hard sometimes because we don't really want, hello. <laughs> we want to hear how good we are, how wonderful we are, how, you know, how great we do what we do. We want to be patted up and pumped up and told how, folk, you know, oh, my God, if you weren't in my life, I couldn't live without you. Die. I bet they figure it out. <laughs> <laughs> So we want to hear all of the good stuff, but in order to mature, say this with me, in order to mature, order to mature I got to be willing to hear the truth about me. 
not about somebody else. I gotta be willing to, I gotta be willing to look in the mirror and hear the hard stuff about me. I gotta wonder, I gotta question why I respond to certain things certain ways. Hello, somebody. <laughs> somebody say corporate prayer. And so the angel came, shine, shine light in the prison, and, and he hit Peter on the side, got him up. I just w- went over all that, told him to get up quickly. Somebody say quickly. quickly. Somebody say quickly. quickly. I believe with all my heart, and I know this is from, the, from Holy Spirit, that if we as a church family could come together in corporate prayer, we're going to see God move some things quickly. So stuff that's kind of been lingering and hanging out. Y'all love it. Do y'all know what I mean when I say hang out stuff? Anybody ever been praying for some stuff that just ain't went nowhere yet? Anybody ever been praying that sometime it got worse before it got better? Amen. But if we could come together corporately, and again, not necessarily even, don't make it be about this place. Even if we just said, okay, at 7 o'clock, Every Saturday, or maybe not every Saturday, but first Saturday every month, 7 o'clock, wherever you are, stop doing what you're doing and start praying. Mm -hmm. Amen. Mm -hmm. Can you imagine the impact we could have? Not just in this church, but in this community. I'm trying to get a group of pastors now to come together and pray over this community. Now, it ain't going so well because, you know, they just... But I believe that there is a remnant of pastors in this city that are going to put their egos aside... And say, yes, let's do this. Because right. I say, I ain't trying, I don't want your members. Right. Right. Amen. Sometimes we're so, t- I ain't trying to take nobody else's members. I just want to pray over this city so that we don't become the next other cities. Right. <laughs> yes, yes. So it says, when Peter came to himself and realized, in verse, I jumped down to verse 11 again. He said, now I know, watch what he said. Now I know of a surety that the Lord Send his angel. Sure. See, watch this. God said he can do some stuff in the lives of all of you all that's going to make you know of a surety that God is for you. And once that happens, nobody will be able to snatch you out of God's hand. Man, that's an awesome place to be. When you get to the, to the revelation, he has done so much for me, and I know it was him. Mm-hmm. I ain't leaving him. Right. Uh-uh. Uh-uh. I ain't leaving him for you, mm-hmm. you, 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 you. Or you. Or you. Right. <laughs> Y'all got it? got it? Now I know of a surety that the Lord has sent his angel and have delivered me out of the hand of Herod and from all of the expectation. Do y'all see that? Come on, y'all. Not only did he deliver him from the hand of Herod, watch this. He said he delivered me from everybody that was expecting me to fail. Right. Right. <laughs> yeah. them, some of them Jews, they, they, was, they was planning his funeral. Right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. They just knew they had Peter. Oh, we got him now. Right. All them guards and all of that. So, so, now, can, you, can y'all just go with me for a minute and, and, and look at how ridiculous their thinking was? Soon as Easter is over, <laughs> soon as we finish celebrating <laughs> the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ, we're going to kill you. Soon as we come out of church, hello, <laughs> y'all missed the shift, didn't you? Soon as we come out of church, we going to do Oh, church show was good today. Lord, I, I, I appreciated the word. The praise team was on, and I'm going to do. Hello. <laughs> Thank you, Justice. Okay, everybody else is quiet. <laughs> Father's response to their prayers was a miracle. They prayed, and Father gave them the miracle of releasing Peter from that prison. And he said to me today, if I could get the people of Kingdom Grace to corporately pray, they'll see miracles released in their lives as well. 
Amen. And so for those of you on live stream and those of you on Periscope, especially members of Kingdom Grace, the reason I had them text y'all and tell y'all to get online is because I need y'all to be a part of the corporate prayer tonight. So now, right now, I need everybody that's in the sanctuary to come to the altar. And this is going to be real easy. Now, I ain't finna put nobody on the spot. You ain't got to go, you know, all down by Muddy Jordan, all them places tonight. I just, no, I just want every person in here to offer God a prayer of thanksgiving for our church. Amen. Come on. Nothing else. Just, just, just offer him a prayer. Those of you that are at home, I need y'all, wherever you at, offer God a prayer of thanksgiving for our church. Those of you on live stream, offer God a prayer of thanksgiving. We got to do this corporately. That's why I had them text y'all and tell y'all to get on. Because we got I need everybody that's connected to us to do this. Because God said if we could come together and start praying corporately, then he's going to start releasing miracles in this house. Amen. Hallelujah. You, you could do that. You could do that. Hallelujah. Okay. Okay. All right. Amen. Quinn is on. Amen. We praise God for Quinn and D. Amen. Praise God for whoever else got on via live stream or via Periscope. And if you can, if you're at a place that you can, I need you to start. Just offer up a prayer of thanksgiving for Kingdom Grace Fellowship Church for whatever it means to you. Whether it was it was whether you were part of the initial church, whether you joined it later, whether you, you just came in last Sunday, uh, whether you like to preach word, whatever. Come on, I need you to offer up a prayer of thanksgiving. We don't want to take any of God's benefits for granted. And this is a good place for us to connect corporately. Because when we connect in prayer, giving him thanks, we are setting ourselves up for signs and wonders and miracles to be released. I'm believing God that between now and September we're going to see miracles in this house. Miracles of healing. Miracles of restoration. Miracles of people being set free. We're going to see miracles. Y'all don't have to pray quietly. You can pray louder if you want. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you tonight. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We thank you, Father, for Kingdom Grace Fellowship Church. We thank you for the body of Christ. We thank you for all of the churches that are open tonight, that are open today, Father, that, that lift up the name of the Lord. We pray for every church, Father. I ask you tonight to fill every church to capacity, not just here, not just our church, but churches everywhere, Father. I pray tonight for struggling churches. I pray for those churches, Father. I pray for those pastors who are scratching their heads even now trying to figure out how they're going to make ends meet. I pray for that pastor who's frustrated and ready to walk away from ministry. I pray, Father, for those individuals who have been hurt by church. Father, forgive us of our sins. I lift up every church, not just in this city, but across this nation. Because this nation needs you, oh God. We need strong churches. We need churches that will lift up the name of Jesus. We thank you tonight, Jesus, because you said that if we would lift you up, you would draw men unto you. And so, Father, we're, we're believing you for the drawing. We're thankful for what you're doing in our lives tonight. We're thankful for Kingdom Grace Fellowship Church. We're thankful to be connected, Father, to so many other great, great churches. And so we just want to say thank you tonight. We corporately and publicly tell you thank you, oh God. We may not be perfect. We may not have everything just right. But, God, we thank you that we have a free house where we can come in and worship and praise your holy name. And nobody looks at us if worship goes a little long because we understand the beauty of worshiping your holy name and so we thank you for that tonight Father we thank you for freedom to worship you we thank you for freedom to praise your holy name we thank you for freedom to be large in you tonight God we thank you for a house that desires to learn the more of you oh God I thank you for a people that will come together for Bible study even the day after a holiday I thank you Father for people that have a mind to learn the more of you and so I thank you tonight God we offer you prayers of thanksgiving tonight and we say father have your way hallelujah have your way oh God we thank you father that our light will not be hidden 
up under a bushel, oh God, but that we will shine brightly in this community and in this state and in this region and in this nation. We will shine brightly, oh God, and we thank you for that. Thank you for the call. Thank you for the call that is upon Kingdom Grace Fellowship Church. Thank you, oh God for all that you're doing. Thank you, Father. I lift up every one of these individuals that are now kneeling at the altar. I lift up every individual that's praying with us at home or at work or wherever they are. I thank you, Father, for every person that heard and watched tonight and is now lifting you up prayers of thanksgiving because the enemy has tried to make it seem like our lives have been so so bad and so hard but father the truth of the matter is you have blessed us and we thank you for that tonight we thank you for life and health and strength oh god we thank you even for a mind to be in this your sanctuary on tonight we thank you tonight god and we give you glory hallelujah 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 we thank you tonight father we bless your name hallelujah we give you glory and honor and praise. We say you are worthy, O oh God. We declare that you are great. Hallelujah. And you are greatly to be praised. Hallelujah. Thank you, O oh God. Thank you, Father, for a mind to serve you. Thank you that you are giving us even the more the mind of Christ. Thank you, Father, that we are taking off carnality and putting on the mind of Christ. And so we thank you for that, Father. Again, I ask you to, to fill every house of worship, O oh God. There are some pastors who are just frustrated, frustrated by the low numbers. Even in this summer season, Father, I pray for the the, the, the spirit of adoption to be released, oh God, and that people will come saying, what must I do to be saved? So Father, fill every house of worship. Encourage every pastor's heart in the name of Jesus. Even pastors that I have, I don't know personally, if they ever see this broadcast, if they ever watch this live stream, Father, just let their hearts be encouraged. Let them know that someone is praying for them tonight and that all is not lost and that you are a great, great God and that you still do great exploits. And so, Father, we believe in you for signs and wonders and miracles. Between now and September, we're thanking you by, that by the end of September, there's going to be so many praise reports and so much that you have done that we will not be able to tell it all. Thank you, oh God. We love you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Woo! Thank you, God. Thank you for the mandate to pray. Thank you, Lord. Ha! Hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. It is to you I give the glory. It is to you I give the praise. For you have done so Father, we thank you tonight for this opportunity again. And we just speak blessings over your people tonight. Father, that you will make us the people that you desired us to be. Satan, the Lord rebuke you. We plead the blood of Jesus against you. And we decree that no weapon formed against us shall prosper. And that every tongue that rises up against us, you shall condemn. Because this is the heritage of the saints. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 It is to you, Holy Father, no one like you, and I will bless your name, bless your name.
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, if you are thankful, come on, just put your hands together real quick. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. And thank you all for praying with us on tonight. Amen. I love y'all. Love you live stream. Thank you for joining us. We have already signed off Periscope. Amen. All right. Come on, y'all. Let's let's close. Do our make ready for our closing prayer. While you're coming, of course, we're praying for the Harden family this week. Amen. And we are also praying for um, Sylvia Purdue, who lost her father. Amen. Amen. Amen.